going to go ahead and mute everybody. There, you are all muted. And um, I'd like to get started. So unfortunately, Sarah's not here yet, so we would normally start with her. Um, I just, oh, oh that, that's not Sarah. Um, I got a beep and thought it might be Sarah. Um, but I'm sure she'll be here shortly. Um, just to let you know that on June 1st, we had a new board of directors installed. They're almost all new. There's three directors that, that stayed on and all of them are with us here today to share what they have in store for the club members going forward. Uh, Sarah is the president of the club. She's not here. So we're gonna start with Becky Van Houten, who is the vice president of the club. So Becky, if you'll please unmute your uh, microphone. I don't see Becky. So do you want to proceed with you asking me questions or I have printed I, out questions, I can just talk. You, I'm gonna ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and then I'll just kind of interview you as we go. So if stuff that you don't tell me and that I think everybody wants to know, then I'm gonna ask you those specific questions. Perfect. Cool. Go ahead, Becky. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so um, one of the things probably most amazing about me is that I've been married for 47 years to my husband, Bruce. Wow. And uh, we have two great kids. Unbelievable that they're both in their 40s now. I can't believe it. And we have three grandkids. Uh, we have two that belong to our son and one that belongs to our daughter. And um, they're be all becoming dog lovers. Our, our two, two of our grandkids weren't dog lovers at first, but they have, they're becoming more dog lovers. So that's a good thing. Um, and let's see, uh, my career was in early childhood education. Uh, and I was the director for many years of several nonprofit organizations uh, that related to working with children. So I do, besides having a passion about uh, dogs and animals, I also have a passion for children and want to see the best for children um, and work to try to bring their needs forward. And I get involved in politics because of that reason. That's very cool. I did not know that. Um, what are your favorite dog activities? Do you do confirmation or any performance events? Or what kind of dog activities do you participate in? Okay, well, so the funny thing is, <laughs> I'm not good with confirmation. My dogs have been showing in confirmation, but I don't show them myself. I uh, hire a handler to show them usually. And I'll have a story to tell you about confirmation later. But um, we do obedience and we've done rally. Um, I tried a little agility. I've done a little bit of tracking. So we've tried a number of things uh, cool. together. Cool. What brought you to Otter Hounds? I had Border Terriers for uh, a number of years and Border Terriers and Otter Hounds uh, were used to work together. And so as I was studying the history of the Border Terrier, I found out about Otter Hounds. And I was sad because I didn't have a big dog anymore. We had golden retrievers to start with. And so we uh, then took on um, finding out about the otter hound. And the first otter hound I met was McDougal, who belonged to uh, Arlene and Doug Smith. Cool, that's cool. Um, and how long have you been in otter hounds total? Um, I started with otter hounds in 2002. We got our first one at that point, um, and her name was uh, Centasia's Good Time Girl, Kendall, and she came to live with us and we read her and the rest is history. Cool, um, and in the time you've been in Otter Hounds, how many Otter Hounds have owned you? Uh, we have generally lived with a number of Otter Hounds, uh, as many as up to six. At one time though, we never had more than five. Um, and so we, um, we had a couple of them kind of on a temporary basis for rehoming kind of purposes. Yep, yep, that happens with a lot of us. And um, what is your kennel name? If you're a breeder, I know you are. What yeah, so kennel? our kennel name is Magicwood, and we did also breed under the kennel name of Kalevala. 
got it. And how how many otter hunts did you produce as a? Uh, let's see. I did uh, figure that out today. And uh, let's see. What was it? Uh, geez, quite a few, but I don't. Want to <laughs> so, 35. 35 wow. otter hound puppies. Yeah. That's a nice contribution. Cool. And what is your favorite otter hound moment or story that you'd like to share? Yeah, well, some of the people here may recall this event because I brought my otter hound Jack uh, to uh, Louisville and uh, I wanted to show him as a veteran and we signed up for the uh, best of breed competition and uh, I took him in the ring and unfortunately we were the first one in line and very quickly we caught up with the end of the line because it was a huge number of dogs that were entered that year in Louisville and Jack quickly caught up with the end of the line and there was a girl in season right at that uh, end of the line. And so he pulled me along and we ran into kind of a, a hump in the uh, mat and I tripped on it and we were going so fast I fell flat on my face and uh, it was kind of awful, but um, Fortunately, he didn't breed the female in the ring. <laughs> Thank goodness. That would have been a little bit... Uh, a little <laughs> embarrassing, yes. Yeah, exactly. That's a cool story. <laughs> Other than being vice president, what else do you do for the club? Uh, I am uh, the website builder for the Otterhound University. Uh, and I also um, am the coordinator for judges' education. And then one of our sort of affiliated organizations. I'm part of the uh, Otterhound Club of America Reproduction Bank, and I am the treasurer for that uh, group. Sounds like you're pretty busy. Um, what is your personal goal for the Otterhound Club going forward? Uh, you know, for me, it's really about communication. Communication is a very difficult thing that we all find in life, and I think it's so important to really have uh, good communication. And so that's one of the things that's one of my uh, goals. And uh, I think making the Otterhound Club of America more personal for every member, whether they're a breeder, uh, a pet owner, somebody who participates in all the various dog sports. Uh, I just really would like to see us find out what will help those people and uh, what we can do for them and what they might like to do for the club. I agree, Becky. That's great. Thank you very much. Next mm -hmm. up is Ashka Gordon. Ashka is the treasurer of the club. Ashka, if you will unmute yourself. I'm unmuted Tell us now. a little bit about you. So um, I'm married with Otterhounds um, in <laughs> San Diego, California. So um, uh, we enjoy beach life lifestyle and we try to promote it uh, as much as we can. Um, what do I do as far as my career is uh, I'm an IT project manager. So I'm familiar with variety of IT technologies, but my core, core role is really um, um, infrastructure. Um, in, within the U.S. and internationally, so I deal with engineers, with uh, business people, with vendors. I negotiate contracts. I keep budgets. I play with quotes and and other people's money. So um, I guess I fell into the treasurer role kind of naturally, with my uh, Excel spreadsheet uh, calculations and then you know, keeping up the purse and making sure we're not over budget, right? And celebrating when we are under budget. So um, I think that uh, um, also also working with different levels of skills of people technically and financially and business-like, um, I, I think it's helpful in, in what we are trying to accomplish. Cool, that's cool. Um, and what kind of dog activities do you do? Well, I do as much as I can so I do, I did start with confirmation. Um, I was talked into it and I do have a lot of very sad stories about my performance in the ring. 
Um, I also do rally obedience. I really like that. We uh, dabbled a little bit in agility, um, but in California, because of the climate, I have so many excuses why it's challenging. Uh, but we tried. We were not good at it, but we tried. We had fun. Um, uh, most recently, I got involved in barn hunt, and we love it. Um, it's, uh, it's a great, um, um, just watching the dog work the nose and, and really relying on the dog to tell you how it's going to be versus you being the dog, which is a completely reverse concept than what we're used to either with confirmation or obedience, right? Because if the dog doesn't want to tell you where the rat is, you're just not going to know, right? Yeah. Um, and then putting a little time pressure on it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So um, what else? Um, I did um, dabble in crafting and other things. Yeah. Yes, Robin? Cool. cool. That's cool. Great activities there. You're very active with them. Um, what brought you to Otter Hounds? Um, dog shows, really. So we had um, German wire pointers which are shaggy dogs and I enjoy the shaggy dogs and they passed away because of old age. So uh, we went without dogs for about a year, maybe two, and we started going to dog shows looking for the next shaggy adventure. And just, we came across an otter hound. I was looking at giant schnauzers that I'm sure Robin, you can kind of relate, yeah? Yep. Um, but we just did not find the right breeder and the right dog. It just didn't line up. Um, and we came across an otter hound and I rolled with one in the grass and that was it. So how long ago was that? That was in 2006, I want to say, or 2005, 2006, probably. Yeah. How many otter hounds have you had in that time? Uh, seven seven that lived with me uh i average i'm down to four now but i average five so we started with one then we bred um and if you ask me why we bred and how much i i couldn't answer it was the lady that sold us the otter hound that kind of led the breeding process i just knew i wanted puppies so i kind of simplified it for myself um and then when the puppies were eight weeks old. We took them to Palm Springs or Indio to a dog show just to kind of meet with other otter hound people and see what happens. And everybody was very supportive and then said that we should try the dog show thing. And, um, and yeah, just the rest is history, so. Cool, um, and I know you're a breeder. What's your kennel name? Yeah. Uh, my kennel is Blue Fairy Otter Hound. Um, and uh, we were inspired by movie, uh, Artificial Intelligence, AI by wow. Spielberg. Blue Fairy, Make Me an Otter Hound. We always dreamed about puppies and otter hounds, and there they are. So, cool. our cool. Blue I never knew that. What's mm -hmm. your favorite otter hound moment? Well, puppy moments are great. There is, there is nothing uh, more rewarding than actually whelping a puppy. I know they're kind of gross and all, but when you see life and you have it in your hands and you cut the umbilical cord and then it starts nursing, it's just fabulous. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's like nothing else. Yep. Um, so other than being treasurer, what other activities do you help with for the Otter Hound Club? Uh, I don't, you know, I, I used to do a lot of, um, um, well, in old days, right? I ran the tech committee where we build the website and build the foundation for the communication platforms and the web platforms. Um, so at the current moment, uh, that responsibility has been transitioned and I'll plan to focus more on treasury and supporting events. Because really, I think that the club should be about the members for the members. And in order to do fun things, you know, that, that money thing comes into play. And I never want to have an excuse that we can't support member activities because we have no money, right? So that yeah. was one of the motivations that led me to land at the treasure position in addition to, uh, you know, just supporting people getting together and awesome. having awesome. Do you have any personal goals for the Otter Hound as it goes forward? 
You know, I, um, I, I'm like Becky. I, I think that communication, collaboration, and making it fun is important, right? Because that's what brought me to Autohounds, and that, in my opinion, is what is going to bring longevity to the breed, right? It's it's a it's a it's a it's a cycle. We can't sell puppies if people don't know about the breed. If we don't talk about the breed, right? How are the people going to say, "Oh, I want an Autohounds puppy"? So. Uh, exactly. With the club being an organization that educates and supports members getting together, talking about the auto hounds, it goes back into um, getting new people involved in the breed and placing puppies in great homes. Exactly. Thank you very much, Ashka. So Sarah is with us now. Sarah. Oh, surprise, surprise. Had a little mishap. So sorry. But you know what I love about you all is you're perfectly capable of just picking the ball up and running down the field. And that's why this is a great team. My apologies to everyone. But there you have it. And we won't spend any more time on that. Stuff happened. So yes. this is our president, Sarah McQuitty. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. And I'm going to just start where I would have started and have you share your vision for the club with us, what your overall vision is, and, and uh, let us know what you have in store. Well, thank you. Well, you know what? I think age improves so many things. And I look back when I was an officer and involved in the club before, and I don't know that we had the um, collaboration that we are now seeing on the board where everybody's got really kind of a common theme and vision going forward. So when we approached this group of individuals to come forward, it was an opportunity to say, okay, you know, we've all been involved at some level, but really we've got to get a foundation so that this club can live on. Um, so we have some exciting plans. We really need to make sure the board is approachable because this is the members club. This is called check your ego at the door and come on, let's all figure out how we can elevate the Otter Hounds. I mean, everyone that's a member of this club loves the breed. Everyone is a great ambassador. Everyone will carry the torch for us. So we as a board just need to make sure we're listening to say, what is it you want to move forward? And clearly we've heard that, you know, we need to do other things outside of confirmation. And so that was a, that, you know, we've heard people have approached us and said, please, please, please. And so we have people that are engaged in so many outstanding activities that we said, let's make that happen. How can we open the door and make that easy? Uh, we want to make sure that it's. So inspiring the volunteering, you know, I was uh, the volunteer director for United Way for years. And that's a passion of mine because as we all say, it takes a village. It's gonna take all of us as a club to elevate our breed. And so the more members coming to the table to help with that, the better. And I think tonight, quite honestly, is the best example. I look at the board just dumping in and going and y'all made it happen. And so that's who we're about. So we just need to make sure that we get more people involved. How can we outreach and say to people been involved before? Robin, I, I look to you and say, you're fairly new to the brief. And so being able to also look outside the what's going on other people, what are things that we can borrow to help create our foundation. So to that, I would say for all of you involved in other dog clubs, some policies and procedures together so that this is a, a kind of a plug and play. Uh, we had kind of a short turnaround coming on as a new board. So, you know, Joel and his group, they're looking at that with the bylaws. But let's get all of that foundation. And so that when somebody approaches Cindy to say, I'd like to have a regional specialty and look at Texas, 
she can just really pull that together quickly and make that happen. You know, they want to have a health otter talk on what's the best time, you know, to have my shots for my dog. Should I do that? Should I tire? What should we do? So we just want to make sure we listen to all that and perform that. Um, so a, a finance committee, that's one of the best practices stated by AKC. We just want to make sure we've got a lot of folks helping us be successful. Because I you know, came in to Ashka's point about we really have to have some dollars to make some things happen. We've got some amazing restricted funds with our health, um, epilepsy. What is it we can do to outreach with those funds and really have an effect? So I have to tell you, um, Robin, you gave me an hour and a half just to talk about my piece, right? I did. I did. It's a four-hour meeting. Oh, okay. So thank you, everybody. I'm just getting <laughs> warmed up. But, um, you know, you are going to see so much from us. We know that one of our first priorities is to get the job descriptions together. Because people are like, I want to do something. And we just need to make sure we're kind of married to that and say, Ideas. Here are ideas we have, but we all need to listen. We need to be better listeners. And so thank you because tonight's another first step in listening and participating. So thank you all for being here. And Robin, I'll stop because I'm kind of like a clock. I can just get wound up and just keep going. And going and we going. love that about you. So Sarah, tell us a little bit about you personally. We're kind of going through the panelists and asking personal questions about where they awesome. live, what they did. Tell us about you. Awesome. Okay. So, wow. Um, I'm very fortunate to be married to my husband, Rusty, for 35 years. Why he stayed that long, I don't know. But okay. no. I'm happy you did. Um, you know, I've been in otter hounds probably 37 years. My very first otter hound, uh, holy smokes, Chester. I picked out of a pool of puppies sitting and he picked me out. He said, thank you, I'll have that ring. And so I said, well, I'll have that dog because I didn't know anything about really confirmation to say, oh, does this does he have whatever i was just like well he's just darn cute and he went on to be the number one i don't know how it happened when i was on the lead because clearly i did some really stupid stuff early on you know they ought to have really a class to say hmm, here's what you shouldn't do with your otter hand i i'm just going to interject here because one of my very first shows you know, they said, okay, we want you to go down and do an L. And I'm like, okay, well, clearly that can't be too difficult. Well, it was because the dog got on the wrong side of me. And I said, well, okay, well, one just should leap over their dog and get on the other side. Well, you can well over when I approached the judge because I was like, oh, I didn't know we were going to do that. But, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm wide eyed. I'm home. See, you need to take a class or two. So, you know, when you look back and think of all the things our otter hounds have brought to our lives, um, I, I was the chamber president in Greeley and retired there, which people didn't think that was ever going to happen. August. So, well, I guess it was the middle of August. And so, It looks like we lost Sarah. I think we lost Sarah. So when she comes back, Carmen, if you'll let her in, we'll have her pick up from where she left off. Hi, I have no idea where I went, but I disappeared for a while. Um, I thought she was cutting me off and I thought, cut him off. So no, I spent uh, time as the chamber CEO and that's my passion working in nonprofits and boards of directors and helping 
you know, your membership, we call them our investors grow and the everybody's got to have kind of that same forward motion because when you have people kind of tucking at your heels and pulling you back you think that's really not for the benefit so it's it's a good license and like i say age does wonderful things in helping you you know i uh, love the fundraising aspect i love the engagement aspect so i spend a lot of time a lot of blood sweat and tears and Rusty got to play dog dad role, and now we do it together. And we live on the RV and just travel around. Right now, I'm in Lubbock, Texas, where sometimes I get good connection and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have air conditioning, and now we do. So, have, yeah. So everyone has heard that. Um, but. Um, how many autos have you had over the years? I'll ask you that. Um, I should have maybe written down names, maybe 12. I had two rescue bitches and uh, what a joy to have rescue bitches. They changed our lives considerably. Um, one wouldn't come out from underneath the car for a week. I say that that's a bit of an exaggeration class and they became bonded so Rusty was her daddy and so it's just it's amazing though when you can take an otter hound out of a they're not thriving like they should and being able to let them be in their environment that's very cool part, part of your you know, career with otter hounds so um, but yeah fortunate enough to have an amazing um all-time winning male number of specialties dual specialties go on and on and you know the Brantley that know what they're doing because clearly i could be jumping over the dog but, <laughs> uh, but it's um it's been fun awesome do you have any other fun stories about otter hounds other than you're jumping think, over your dog yeah, in I the think, elf? Think, i think the jumping over is pretty good <laughs> i also i also yeah, at the national where I went around the ring and my feet went out from underneath me and I slid under the ring gates and into the next ring. That was good. You know, that was good. But the dog still won winner's dog, so I was okay with that. I was okay. So but there's just fun stories. We should do a goofy fun together a coffee we could do a cocktail hour and tell great yeah. stories that has been mentioned by several people just have a little group chat and everybody just tell fun stories i think that would be a blast so that's definitely yes. on the list of, of fun things to get to anything else you'd like to add sarah oh um you know robin can go on but please let's start to hear from the other members of the board and thank you for carrying on without me there Yes, thank you for joining us when you could. I appreciate it. We knew you'd be here sooner or later. Yes. All right, Barb, you're next up as secretary of the Otter Hound Club. Barb. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you for joining okay. us. How are the puppies? Oh, they are wonderful. Good. So cute. Good, good. So, Barb, tell us about you, where you live, um, what you've done in the we past. We live in... We live in rural Montana. Uh, we have five acres here, so dogs get big yards to run in. Um, my husband and I have been married 40 years. We have four boys, three of whom live close or on this property, and the last one lives in Tokyo, Japan, so wow. that's a little different. Um, I work for the federal government. Um, I'm an auditor for people who spend your tax money. That's cool. I never knew that. Um, what are your favorite dog activities? What do you participate in with your otter hounds? Um, I have one dog that's doing confirmation right now, but I do have her with a handler because there's only so many hours in the day. Yep. Um, <laughs> I have uh, two other dogs that I do um, rally and tricks and, um, you know, canine good citizen stuff with. Cool, cool. And what brought you to Otter Hounds? I had a big furry mixed breed dog that I loved and he died at age seven. 
and it was just awful. So I went looking for another big furry breed and I decided I wanted a purebred to get better health. So I started looking through pictures, found otter hounds, called the nearest breeder and had an otter hound two weeks later. Wow. Wow. And how long ago was that? That was three years. Oh, okay. Cool. And have, so do you just have the one otter hound or do you have more than one? No, I have three. three. We got Rose as a puppy in March and in September we got Lily as a 10 week old puppy. And then shortly after that, we had the opportunity to um, bring Coco into the house too. And she was three years old when we got her. Awesome. And I know you're a breeder because you have a brand new litter of puppies. What's <laughs> yes, your, a brand new breeder. <laughs> what's your kennel name? Briar Root. It comes okay. from two things. We live in the Bitterroot Valley in Montana. And my first otter hound's name is Briar Rose. Oh. So they're Briar Root. Perfect. That's perfect. And is this your first litter? Yep. This is our first litter. My mother raised Airedales when I was little. So we've been around, I've been around puppies when I was younger, but this is the first. Cool. Cool. And um, anything else that you do for the club other than your beauty job as secretary? That's a big job. So I don't know that you have time for other things, but is there anything else that you're active in? Any committees or anything like that? Um, I've been working on an article for the breeder page for Otterhound University. It seems to be the slowest project I've ever done, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. Cool, cool. And what's your personal goal for the club? Um, I would like to see inclusion and events. More fun things to do and uh, more people involved in them. I agree with you on that. Well, thank you very much, Barb. I appreciate that. So next up, we have Eileen Glennon. Eileen, if you'll unmute yourself, let's get to know you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Tell us about you, Eileen. Um, what can I say? I retired uh, from teaching English and theater at a college and um, um, began to do search and rescue. I'm also a tracking judge for the AKC. And um, I also do a lot of therapy work and I uh, belong to a therapy group and I'm a therapy dog evaluator. Awesome, awesome, where do you live? Oh, I live on the Illinois, Wisconsin border on the Illinois side. Cool, and how long have you been in Otter Hounds? Well, I'm like Andy and Bev and uh, Sarah. We all started in kindergarten. Um, <laughs> exactly. I started in 87. Wow. Wow. And uh, you already told us about your dog activities. Um, what brought you to Otter Hounds? How were you introduced to them? I was looking for, uh, I had two older Irish setters, field dogs, and I was looking for uh, uh, Irish setters. So I went to a local dog show and fell in love with um, Arlene and Doug's otter hound and Cindy Crisos's otter hounds because her two children were lying on top of them and she had to try to persuade the dog to get up and leave the kids to go in the ring. And I thought they were adorable. So I told a friend that if I didn't get a setter, I would get an otter hound. And three months later, that friend called me and said she had a friend who had a place, a 15 month otter hound. Did I want him? Wow. So that's, that's how I rescued him. That's cool. How many so, otter hounds have you had total? Oh, gee, maybe 12 or around 10, 12, maybe. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I, are you a breeder? Yes, I bred. Yeah, what's your um, name? River Run. Okay. So, yeah. How many hounds have you produced as River Run? How many? Um, over 40, I suppose. Wow, wow, that's a lot of otter hounds. Mm. Do you have a favorite otter hound moment or story that you'd like to share? Well, I have some funny stories. Probably my favorite moment was um, Finnegan's CT when he became a champion tracker. Um, I was talking to somebody about my second otter hound whom I imported from England um, four days before Desert Storm 
Oh and it was Crufts. It was Hound Day of Crufts. He didn't have a health certificate, so he couldn't get on the plane. So I didn't get on the plane. So um, they made arrangements for him to get a health certificate, but I had to take two buses with this dog I had met once to a hotel where they picked him up and we finally got him that uh, health certificate. He got on the plane. Uh, everybody at Heathrow was running around with AK-47s. Um, we came to Chicago in January and yes, there was a snowstorm. We were the last plane in before they closed O'Hara. Wow. And I was supposed to take him through customs and I said to the man, I can't carry that dog. And he goes, is that yours? Just a minute. He brought a friend and they put him on a trolley I never went through customs. They took me right to my friends who were waiting and we left. Wow. So that was my first import. Wow, that's cool. And what activities do you do for the Otter Hound Club other than just a director? I know you work hard on the voice. Tell well, us what I've, else you do. I've edited the voice for about 10 years, but um, that's coming to an end. We're getting new people. Um, I've worked on uh, uh, public education. I'm co-chair of rescue and I've helped with the health, uh, health surveys every time we've done it since 1994. So cool. Okay. What uh, personal goals do you have for the club moving forward? Oh, I agree with inclusion and communication, but my pet, my, my real desire is to get more working dogs. Um, I think yeah. otter hounds um, are wonderful. Um, I've had two certified search dogs, and they're very good. And um, they are as good as bloodhounds, as I always tell my bloodhound friends. <clears throat> and um, I love to see more people do that. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I tell people all the time about um, your search and rescue um, talents and about that otter hounds can do that because they look at a big shaggy dog and sometimes they don't realize how talented they are. It's kind of cool. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share? Nope, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you very much. Cindy Huffman is next. Cindy, if you will unmute and tell us a little bit about you. Okay, well, um, I'm Cindy Huffman. We live in middle of Illinois, out in the country on five acres, and I'm married to Ron. Um, we, have, I, we have three grandchildren, two kids, and I was an art educator for 35 years, and crazy enough, because they suck me in all the time that I go back, and I might be going back again, um, so... Uh, but I also have my own studio in the house as well. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Um, what kind of dog activities do you do with your otter hounds? Well, um, confirmation. And we started out with a handler and Ron really got into it. So I'm the cheerleader. I do this. I'm a social person. So I'm the cheerleader on the sidelines. And I, um, we do, we've, we love doing tracking, so that is one of our goals. And then I clean up after my otter hounds constantly. That's really <laughs> probably my main job. Sweeping, vacuuming, wiping the counter off, you know, that kind of stuff. How many otter hounds do you have? We have three. Okay. Yeah. And how many have you had over your course of time in otter hounds? Three. 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 Oh. Yeah, not including, we had puppies, you know, at one time, but three that we, that are ours. How, how long have you been in the breed and what brought you to the breed? <laughs> almost seven years and what brought us to the breed um we had saint bernards and we lost our saint bernard so uh we had seen um i i'm sure it was probably jason but it was we saw some otter hounds at our local shows and i'm like well those are cute those are cute we'd see them on tv those are cute and so then um after we lost our the last saint uh four months later Ron calls me and says, hey, um, you know, I, there's this woman named Becky and she has an otter, an otter hound that has been rehomed. And I'm like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm just really not ready. So then Becky calls. And so then we 
had this long, long conversation and we fell in love with her. And she, but the kicker is you guys, if she ever wants you to, she can suck you right in. She said, I'm going to draw, I'm going to Louisville. I'll drop him off for four days. And then if you don't want him, I'll come back and get him. So um, needless to say, when she dropped Stuart off, Stuart Duck, he came in and he just lay down and he hasn't left since. <laughs> That's a great story. And I know you're a breeder then. So what's your kennel name? Concara, Concara oh. Kennels. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank you. And yeah. what's, what's your favorite Otter Hall moment or story? You know, I thought about this question a long time, but I think, you know, speaking from my heart, probably, you know, when we got Stuart, Stuart had, he was scared and he had some trust issues. So we were really trying to, to help him to, it was okay to trust people. And then we got Darby and, um, you know, so that, that was good. And then Darby had puppies and Lizzie decided that she was going to stay with us. She was not gonna go anywhere. So Lizzie taught him how to be fun. How to, how to be happy, that it's okay. And you know, if he would be grumpy one day, she would just, she just goes over and says, come on, let's go play. So that is my greatest moment because really, if you would have seen where he was to where he is today, it's so heartwarming. It really is. And she did it. She really did. That's so cool. Yeah. I like that. And what activities do you do for the Otter Hunt Club? Well, I'm on, I'm a director. Uh, I'm also uh, really involved in supported entries and events. In the past, I've done um, I've done Meet the Breed PC. Uh, I have done um, helping with uh, sales, etc. So I'm kind of a sure. Do you need it done? Okay, I'll help you. So yeah. Cool. And what's your personal goal for the club? I am really passionate about getting more activities in the club. You guys, I mean, not everyone is all confirmation. Um, and we have heard over and over again, it could just be a gathering. It could, you know, I want to learn how to do nose work. And in these Zooms, people, we've gotten two people now that said, hey, I'm certified to teach nose work classes. And we're like, well, that's pretty sweet. So it's just getting people excited. And it's like, you know, if I just want my dog to lay on the couch, that's okay too. Um, so it's just being a village together is really my goal. And again, getting more supported entries so we can get these dogs finished and more tracking events and, you know, getting titles before and after the name is wonderful. I agree. Thank you, Cindy. I appreciate that. Joel is up next. Joel, if you'll unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Well, um, I am the token male of the uh, board. <laughs> I'm uh, married to my wife, Bethany, for the last 31 years. We were married on Valentine's Day. Um, we have three children together and uh, seven grandkids. Wow. And where she, do you live? Oh, I'm I, live in, I, I live in Grand Rapids. Oh. I'm a cardiac monitor tech and she is a sterile processing tech. So nice. we both work in healthcare. Um, our two daughters work in healthcare. And uh, Zane, our son, following along, is a chef. <laughs> That's kind of like healthcare. Yeah, it's helping. Ooh. So we're all kind of like service providers. Sounds like it. And what kind of activities do you do with your otter hounds? Well, Miracle um, is our only otter hound. Uh, and she loves to show. She um, was brought up and shown how to show by uh, Carmen and Nancy, and has done very well. Um, activities other than that, she loves to go for walks, she loves to swim. Um, I'd like to get her into dock diving, but I can't get her to go off the dock. <laughs> she does like to fetch, 
she does will go 100 miles an hour in the backyard, get the ball, and sometimes she brings it back, and sometimes she takes it up on the deck. <laughs> Through Otterhound fashion. Yep. What brought you to Otterhounds? Well, it, it's funny, because back in the 80s, and I'm not even sure what year it was, uh, Beth and I were at Grand Haven, and we saw this dog jumping into the channel, chasing a tennis ball. And we didn't know what it was. I mean, it was a long hair. It would come out of the water and it was like shake, 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 shake. And we thought, God, what a cool looking dog. And so Beth went up to the, the owners and said, well, what kind of dog is that? And uh, we found out it was an otter hound. It must have been 1987 or something along in there. And um, so Beth being the the searcher somehow found Bev Byron in Calgary. And in 1993, uh, we brought home Grizzly. He was our, our first. And when he passed in 2001, um, it took us another 11 years to find another. Wow. And so we uh, went to a dog show in East Lansing and met up with Carmen and Nancy. And Nancy said that she was going to have a litter. And she said, well, because Beth had her heart set on getting a male. And Nancy says, well, what if we only have a female? I said, oh, no problem. Before Beth could answer, because I know she had her heart set on a male. And so then Miracle came home to, to live with us. And Carmen and Nancy were the ones that were showing her most of the time. And she did extremely well. We got Miracle to be a pet. We weren't really crazy about the show world. Um, I had an aunt that did Bedlington Terriers and I thought she was very obnoxious. And so I was thinking, oh, there's no way I'm getting involved with that. But Watching Miracle go around that ring was like music. Yeah, that's cool. I've seen that with our dogs as well. Um, what's your favorite outer home moment? Well, I think um, a funny thing, when, when Nancy was taking her in Marshall to best in show owner handler, um, I was videotaping it. And as soon as Miracle won, I uh, turned the camera down to the stands. And so at the end of it, I didn't get anything about her getting a ribbon. Only I got a picture of these green wooden stands. So that was the end of that video. And um, I, I heard, got a lot of grief for that. <laughs> I can imagine. So what projects are you working on for the club? Well, I'm... I, I don't like to say that I'm the chairperson of anything, but I'm on a committee um, reworking the, the bylaws. And I'm also involved with uh, member relations. And do you want to share any personal goals for the club with us? Well, I've always wanted to make the membership feel like they're valued. So they share their money with the club and I want them to get something back for that. So I want each and every member to feel like they are valued and an important part of this club. I agree with you. Is there anything else you'd like to share, Joel? Um, I think that's enough. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate all that input. Next up, we have Carmen, my partner in crime. Carmen, if you'll like me, Thank you for being my background technician. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for having me. Tell us about Carmen Lane. Oh God, there's too much. <laughs> That's a um, show, so you have about an hour and a half. Well, uh, Carmen Lang is not married. I haven't found that level of enthusiasm for the breed yet. Um, the only children and grandchildren I have have four legs, so. <laughs> um, 
Uh, let's see, I currently work as a scientist uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I work at um, pharmaceutical product development or PPD. Um, we specialize in cancer research, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia. I mean, you name a drug or a disease and I've had my hands on it. Um, uh, let's see. Well, I already said I lived in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> That's amazing that you're a scientist. That always blows my mind. Um, and tell me what kind of activities you're involved in with your hounds. Oh, geez. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is confirmation. Uh, but in my youthful years, uh, I actually did agility, rally, obedience. Uh, we've actually done some barn hunt. And in near future, I'm hoping to get started with some tracking. Awesome. Awesome. Sweet. Do you have any non-dog hobbies? Um, I do a few things. Uh, I still study, you know, and research genetics on the side, but I also, uh, <laughs> I am on a volleyball and soccer team, co-ed. So if you need me to hit or kick somebody, I'm, I'm the gal. Awesome. What brought you to Otter Hounds? Um, well, if you want the literal answer, my parents, because they put me in the back of the car, but, uh, <laughs> In actuality, um, my mother worked with a breeder. Uh, they, they, you know, she was she was prison nurse, health unit manager, and uh, one of her close friends said, "You should bring the kids over. I've got a litter of puppies," and that pretty much spelled it. I mean, I've I've had otter hounds. I mean, for more, <laughs> I've had otter hounds in my life more than I have not had otter hounds in my life. <laughs> How many otter hounds have you had total in that time that have lived uh, with you or stayed with you? We're on number nine. That's little little beaker, wow. beaky beak. That's cool. And I know you and your mom are breeders. What is your kennel name? Uh, we are O'Heavens. Ah, I love that name. How many otter hounds have you produced as O'Heavens? Uh, currently, we're up to 15. Oh. In, yeah, four litters. Cool. And what's your very favorite otter hound moment? Oh God, I've been kind of dreading this question because there's <laughs> way too many. But I think my most favorite one and funny one, uh, we were showing Gabe, a uh, little backstory on Gabe. He was 126 pound, I mean, pure muscle, lean, mean fighting machine, or fighting machine. And he liked to run. He would run for hours if you let him. I mean, he would just go at it. And my mom and I looked at each other and said, hey, we're, they're having a lure coursing uh, tryouts, you know, just free trial, see if your dog liked it. Uh, he took one look at the bags and said, yeah, I want that. And so uh, they started it off and he ran full tilt boogie about a hundred yards and flags went left and he kept going straight. And so me in my silk, you know, show outfit was trying to book it after this dog that made me look like I was going a snail's pace. And I'm like, oh my God, gay. And he took a right and decided to take a leak on a porta potty and I caught him. Holy cow. So, <laughs> that's a great story. So what activities do you do for the club? Uh, well, currently, I am a lovely co-host in uh, these Otter Talks, which I'm looking forward to as the season goes on. Uh, I assist Becky Van Houten in the judges selection process, and I'm hoping to become more integrated and involved with the health committee as the year go goes on. And what is your personal goals for the club going forward? Um... I'd say I have three and two of them kind of go hand in hand. Uh, the first one is breed recognition uh, because I love it when people say, what kind of breed is that? And then they say, is it a Labradoodle? I've never seen that shade before. I'm like, oh no. But, and then the other two uh, go, you know, the communication, I absolutely adore. I do think that, you know, a lot of people don't know, like, I'm pretty sure there's some people that don't know we have otter talks, you know, and the more we reach out, the more of a community we build, it's going to just, it, it'll blow my mind because I love the, camar the camaraderie we already have. So the more people that get into it, it's going to be great. Uh, the other thing is, um, 
health issues. I'd like to bring to the forefront, you know, if we're lucky, you know, a lot of our dogs will just pass out of old age and 99% do. But, you know, if there should be a instance where your dog becomes ill, you know, I want that safety net of other people that have said, yes, this has happened to me. It's not the end of the world. You're going to be okay, you know? Cool. Thank you. Sorry, I had to mute. I have got dog barking in the back background. Um, well, thank you, everybody. Um, a little bit about me. I'm Robin Keeling. I'm fairly new to the club. We got our first uh, otter hound in 2017, and we joined the club right away. Um, I've had a lot of other breed involvement. I breed Black Russian Terriers and, and uh, have been in Black Russians for about 13 years, 13 and a half. Um, we do all kinds of activities with, with them and our Otter Hound Ellie. We do confirmation, we do tricks, um, trick dog, uh, CGC, we've done dock diving, we've done lure cursing, we've done fast cat. So a lot of those fun activities and performance activities. Um, I have no non-dog hobbies. It's all about the dogs. Um, I live in Atlanta. I'm from Minneapolis. I have a 40-year-old daughter and three grandchildren, all who live in Minneapolis. I'm married to my husband, Charlie, who's also on this call because he's out of state right now working. Um, <laughs> He's the one that brought us to otter hounds. He had to have an otter hound. He fell in love with an otter hound at confirmation shows and she was on the same circuit as we were. So he was, I'd always find him over there hugging the dog and cuddling with the dog and on the floor with the dog. And uh, the handler for that dog came over to him and said, you know, I think she's gonna be bred. You could have an otter hound puppy. And from that moment on, <laughs> we were, we were gonna, whether I liked it or not. So we got Ellie and we love Ellie. She's a great addition to our household. Um, we probably will breed her in the future. That's up to Bev, our breeder. Uh, and I looked for her advice in that. Um, I think my favorite Otter Home moment was getting a scent detection title on her when she was eight months old. She was the first Otter Home to do it. And uh, we got a novice container uh, title and uh, two of our three legs towards interior uh, scent detection um, as a baby. So that was pretty darn cool. Um, for the Otter Hound Club, I do this. I do the, I run the Zoom platforms for the house parties, which is Becky's project. And then for the Otter Talks, uh, Carmen and I do that together. Um, as far as my personal goals for the club, it's really important to me that Number one, the breed is first, but number two, the members are first as well for every single member, not just the directors, not just the people who show their dogs, not just any little group, but the entire club. And even beyond that, the entire community. Um, I think we owe it to the entire community, even the ones that may not yet be members, to really reach out to them and uh, actively seek their engagement. That's very important to me. And that's one of the reasons why the Otter Talks um, appealed to me, just to, to gather as much engagement as we could from the entire uh, Otter Home community. So that's a little bit about me. Um, Carmen, do you have any questions that anybody has submitted? Nope, none so far. Okay, if anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask, use your chat function on the bottom and just type those in. Um, and then we'll, we'll do that as soon as we're done with, with uh, finishing up the actual Otter Talk. Um, so one of the things I'd also like you to do with that chat feature is if you have an idea for a future Otter Talk or something you'd like to learn about, um, please let us know by using the chat feature. Um, or what, or just kind of what group of things, whether you want to know about breeding or fun activities or health issues or performance events or anything like that. We're, we're looking for any kind of input that you'd like to tell us about what you'd like to learn about in the future. And also what you might be willing to share with everybody if you have a, an area of knowledge that you would like to share on an Otter Talk and be a panelist. That would be fantastic. Just, you know, in that chat bar to say, you know what, I am an expert at 
clippy nails or grooming or diet or anything like that just to let you let us know what you are um, knowledgeable about or passionate about that would be fantastic um and if there's anybody writing that stuff in um just to let you know our next otter talk is going to be on Wednesday, July 15th, and it's going to be fun activities you can do with your otter hound. Um, we'll also um, have, let's see, Katie Wright and uh, Allison Rosenberg's gonna be there, Tracy Sales and Tom Devlin are gonna be the panelists on that otter talk. Um, this Otter Talk eventually will be posted on Groups I.O. as a recording that uh, you can access. Also, we have the calendar of events on Groups I.O. that you can access if you're a member. If you're not a member and would like information on being a member, we have the application on the Otter Home Club of America website. Um, so if there's any other questions that you have, please check, um, type them there. I'm going to circle back around to um, Joey and Andy who are with us. Uh, Joey uh, Gregory is our um, AKC delegate for the club. She's kind of like the liaison between the club and the AKC. She attends meetings and reports back. And uh, so I'd like to talk to her next while we have her here. Joey, if you're there, if you'll unmute and if you'll tell us about you. Hello, everyone. I am a veterinarian in Maryland. I live right outside DC. I actually went to vet school because of my first otter hound. Um, I became interested in the breed uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s. I wanted a bloodhound and I was looking at bloodhounds and disappointed in their health issues and their lifespan. And then I saw my first otter hound at Westminster in 1991 and I said oh my god that's my dog and I made it to my first national in 1995 and I got to meet caveman there thanks to Andy and Jack and then in 1997 my caveman son Tony was born so um, I've had otter hounds in my house since 97. Wow and what all activities do you do with your otter hounds? I do a little bit of everything we do confirmation obedience tracking rally um agility um whatever they want to do i'm happy to do with them cool cool and how long have you been in otter hounds i didn't catch what year you said uh i said i got interested in them in 91 and my went to my first national in 95 and i uh, brought my first one home in 97. cool and how many otter hounds have you had in that period i have no idea <laughs> a bunch of it a lot <laughs> And I know you're a breeder, yep. um, and I know you just had a litter of puppies, and your kennel name is Iron Quest. How yes. many, do you know how many dogs you've bred total? As I, add, I added it up. Iron Quest has had 57 puppies. Wow. That's, yep. that's really cool. I appreciate it. And I, anything else that you would like to share? Um, no, I'm just, you know, I'm happy to be that. I've been the AKC delegate since uh, 2009. And uh, as the liaison between the club and the AKC, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'm excited to take what the club is doing to the AKC and bringing what the AKC recommends back to the club. We appreciate you doing that. Thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate it. Yep. Also, also with us is Andy McElwain. Andy is the immediate past president of the Otter Hound Club. So she serves on the board as a, uh, like a consulting role for the next year in helping us transition. Andy, if you're there, if you wanna tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, I'm here. I've been in Otter Hounds more years than I care to admit. <laughs> I think I've been in the breed for almost 40 years, which is pretty amazing. Uh -oh. Not even 40 years old, if you believe that. <laughs> you're 36, right? Exactly, yes. Sweet. But I have been in dogs my entire life. Uh, my mother bred Sammy Eds, so that was my first start. I met my first otter hound when I was about 14 years old and just absolutely fell in love with the breed, but they were even more scarce than they are now. So I really had to fight to try and find one. Kind of forgot all about it until after I had gone away to college and met my husband. And it 
that time, my mother found an otter hound that was available. So I got my first otter hound while I was in college in about 1981. Couldn't find a male that I was happy with to breed her to and found a dog in England, imported him. And that was the start of our kennel, which is Aberdeen Otter Hounds. Awesome. Since then, we are now on our, we name all of our litters alphabetically. We are back around to A, so I guess that makes 27 litters. Wow. On top of that, we had the honor of being named by AKC as the AKC Hound Breeder of the Year last year which was so exciting after years and years of hard work, love and dedication, numerous number one dogs, top producing otter hounds, top winning otter hounds in the country. And we still love and enjoy that every day. That was a huge achievement. Thank, congratulations on that. Do you have any idea how many otter hounds you've produced in, in your time? That I couldn't tell you, but I know we've produced over 75 champions. Wow, 75 champions. That's amazing. Yeah. Kind of cool. lost track of the numbers a long time. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I asked ahead of time, because I knew for some of you people that were in the breed for a long time, it's some counting. I know I've bred Black Russians for a long time, and I have to literally count and think back. And it's hard for me, and it's only been 13 years. So right. I can the not imagine. Of all of them, but I can't yeah. count that high. I get it. I get it. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with us? Do you have a favorite otter hound moment? Oh my god, I've had so many favorite otter hound moments. Um, every litter is a favorite. Every time I hold a puppy in my hands, it's one of my favorites. Um, obviously, the wins are great, but taking home the best otter hound in my heart at the end of the day is the most important. Um, I've had, you know, so many fun stories with the Otter Hounds, but mostly it's the people that I've encountered. One of the craziest times I had was probably with our first dog. We brought him home and we're so fortunate to live out in the country and right off of the river. We took him down. I thought I was a fairly good trainer. And then I realized Otter Hounds are not always that reliable and you can't let them off lead. But he was running, he was being so good, and all of a sudden he puts his head up in the air, sniffs the air, and bolts up the side of a ravine. I'm trying to figure out how am I going to call to England and tell them I lost this dog. When a neighbor calls us and says, we're having a barbecue and we're cooking steaks and your dog is laying right here. So he smelled that meat and he was gone. But we got him back and he was a great dog and I just miss him every day. Wow, that's quite the story. Thank you, and thanks for being here with us tonight. Um, that concludes the official part of the Otter Talk. Um, we're gonna open it up for questions. Um, Carmen, did, was there any questions that were on the chat? Uh, there was one question. Uh, Marilyn was wondering if anyone had a hard time understanding the, the talking otter, because you know it's kind of you know up there in range. Can every can any everybody can still for the most part understand what it's saying, right? Okay. I don't hear anybody. I'll say something. It, it is it is a bit difficult to understand if you don't like I already know what they're going to say, but I, I tried to listen to it neutrally and it is a bit difficult to understand, and so we're working on that. Would it help if we put what we were saying in the email itself and then you can either yep. listen and or read? Yep, absolutely. Cool. Yep. That's one of the things I kind of tried to do when I used her as my lead in for like my yep. little yeah. thing was to let people know that. So even if they couldn't, because somebody had said that about our house piece otter that she was kind of hard to hear. Mm -hmm. So I kind of tried to like make sure that the gist was in my invitation. Um, so we're gonna open up the group for um, any discussion, any questions. If you wanna unmute and ask a question, feel free. Um, we're at 8.19 Eastern time. So if anybody has to leave, feel free. But if anybody wants to stay in chat, they're welcome to do that as well. You can either raise your hand or you can uh, go ahead and open your mic and ask questions. We'll open it up for just regular open Q&A or discussion. Can I just suggest with the Otter Talks that maybe you do closed captioning and some text underneath so we can sure. understand? Sure. 
We can do that. Thank you for that advice. Um, that's an option in the Zoom platform. So that's something that's easy to do. I appreciate that. That's, and we'll try it out on the next one and see if, if, it's, uh, if it's too cumbersome, then maybe we'll make some additional changes. But otherwise, I'm happy to implement that. Anybody else? Don't all talk at once. Um, uh, somebody would like to know if there was going to be a national this year. So the national was canceled for Raleigh. I believe it was canceled by the hosting club. Andy, uh, maybe you can speak to that. I think you're probably the most uh, involved one on that that's on the Zoom call. Yes, unfortunately, because of this pandemic and North Carolina being one of those hot spots, the kennel club was kind of forced to cancel, which I suppose is for the best. Um, but very unfortunate. So we're very, very hopeful that next year dog shows will be back to the norm. Um, we've been kind of talking about some other possibilities, if not actually having a national, maybe meeting up in Orlando if Orlando happens, but Orlando is in the red right now. So I'm not sure about that. They had over 10,000 new cases yesterday and that's kind of, I'm working during the pandemic, that's my job and my responsibility is some epidemiology and working with these patients and it's horrible. Wear your mask, wash your hands, please. Yeah, it is horrible. It's a sad thing to have happen. Um, Robin, could Becky jump in here? Cause Becky has been working with Laura on potentially some other activity. So Becky, would you jump in here? I was just going to say that about a virtual I love it. Great morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're very sad about the, um, the situation in Raleigh and that we can't go to the national this year. But uh, Laura Martino was one of the people working on the plans for the show. And she is um, uh, planning on helping us uh, host the speaker. And Joey also knows about the speaker, Dr. Muana from North Carolina State uh, University, who's gonna be talking to us about epilepsy. And it's going to be one of our Otter Talks. Uh, we're very uh, much looking forward to what we can learn about what's, what the research is that she's been working on. Um, and so that will be August 27th, kind of as a part of our national specialty. She was going to speak to us there. And then um, also Laura is working on having some um, merchandise with the beautiful logo designed by Sarah England uh, that people can uh, potentially uh, purchase. And so we'll be getting information out to club members about that opportunity as well as potentially some shirts and and that sort of thing. We're we're exploring the possibility of doing some things virtually, um, and so that's something that if there's anybody on the call tonight that is really good with um, tech stuff um, that could perhaps help us get something like that together, we would love to hear from you. We have some ideas about it, but. It's something that none of us have ever done before and we're just not sure. We'd love to find also um, a club, a virtual show. You may have seen that there was one in June. There's one going on in July. And I, I would like to think there might be one going on for Labor Day. So we just need to find out about it and see if we can participate that way. So thanks. Any questions about that? Thank you, Becky. I've actually got two more questions. Um, will the voice be printed regularly regularly this year? And where can I find a list of volunteer jobs? Um, yes, the voice will be printed regularly this year. We're getting a number of people who are working on it, which is exciting. Um, and 
Sarah will produce a list. <laughs> Take it, Sarah. <laughs> I love you, lady. Okay, so that is a great question, and thank you, whoever asked about the volunteer jobs. I told you know, when you live in a tin can and you travel around, it was like, oh, taxes, I have to pay taxes. So I just got them sent off today. I'm like one happy lady. Uh, so my next is really to get this template put together on volunteer jobs. We will have them on the website. We'll get a list and the voice. And so we will be bombarding you with opportunities because again, the more people we get involved and you know, we all take a small bite of this, we can do so much more. So honest to goodness to help us with the website, to help with the voice, to help with the nationals, to really help with just everything we can possibly think of. And so we've had some folks step forward. And again, it's kind of hard to say, gosh, I'd really like to volunteer for X when I don't know what that entails and the time involved. So, cause everyone's got a different level of time commitment that they are available to give. And so we will have that up for you. My goal is to have it by the end. And look, there's a pussy cat. <laughs> yes. uh, belly, a big pussycat belly. So anyway, um, more to come on that, but please, one of the things, it's kind of like having the list of volunteer jobs. I think having you all hold us accountable is really one of the things we've said we're going to do. We're going to stand there and say, okay, here's what we said we were going to do. And now let's tell you how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it, and how well we succeeded at it and how we can improve it. So um, again, we are open for comments, suggestions. Please let us know what those are. Indeed. Anybody else have any questions? I'd like to say something kind of to piggyback onto what Sarah was talking about for volunteering. You guys, anything small, any ideas, big ideas, small ideas, crazy ideas, step out of the box, where you would like to take the club. We are here to listen and brainstorm. So if you just kind of go, you know, so many times we think, I don't want to say that. That's kind of crazy, but I think it's cool. Say it. Send us an email, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm going to piggyback on your piggyback. Um, okay. Same thing with Thatter, same thing with Thatter talks. We've had so much input on the uh, on Becky's house parties about what people would like to hear about or participate in. So same with that. Um, we've got all of you in this group. So reach out and you can you can put it on the chat function right now, or you can email it um, to us uh, now, later, whenever you think about it. Um, we're here for all of you. So let us help. Sarah, you have anything else? You need to unmute. 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 We can't hear you, Sarah. My final comment is again just to thank everyone for showing up tonight. We will be hearing probably more information. Um, to be sharing with you. Um, I'm also excited to say, please watch for um, an annual meeting that's gonna take place where we're going to share updates and kind of where we're at. That will happen in September, somewhat of the same time frame that we had talked about for the national. Uh, so I think that'll be exciting to get as many folks on the call as we can and really to do kind of a town hall. Here's what we're doing. Here's what else we should be doing. So we'll be able to unveil a lot of things. Again, your interest speaks volumes that you were here tonight. So thanks. Hug and otter hand and really appreciate your time. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, all of you for participating. Thank you, Carmen, for being in the background and co-hosting. Our next otter talk is the 15th of July at seven o'clock and her, Carmen will be hosting that one and I'll be behind the scenes. So it's gonna be a tag team event and we've got a lot more topics and, and auto talks coming up around the bend. Um, just got lots and lots and lots of, of things to share. So just let us know what kind of things you wanna hear about and what you wanna learn about. Thank you very much for coming.
Thank you. Thank you. Nice Thank job. You. Thank <laughs> you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you. Guys, working with you Good to see you, Bev. Prepared. <laughs> Bye, Marilyn. Bye. Hi, Joel. Bye, bye. <laughs> Bye, all my friends. Bye, Marilyn. Bye, Bye. I'm going to see you on the next talk next week. So, um, I have lots to do. Why not? <laughs> exactly. That's awesome, Marilyn. Oh, and um, by the way, the first half hour, Gable was kind enough to come over to me, and we did a lot of brushing while while I was on the call. Uh, <laughs> he looks a lot better. But we'll uh, have to have. We'll have to have you join us for a brushing demonstration next time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh God. No. It's in terrible shape. <laughs> you know, Robin, oops, yes? ex excuse me. While I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here listening. I just had an out-of-the-box thought. Oh, so I'm going to send it to you guys. Oh, yeah. good. Um, sure. You know, I just have that new gorgeous little Adder Hound puppy, and when I got my previous puppy from Eileen uh, almost 12 years ago, I had joined the Outer Hound Club for one or two years, I don't remember. And then it kind of faded away because uh, I didn't really find it that useful. So then when we got Merlin and I joined the previous Otter Talk, the next day I immediately signed up into the club. And so I'm sitting here thinking, and I know one of your goals is to expand your membership. And so wouldn't it be nice if, you know, and when you buy a puppy, all the, you know, kennels have all the um, email addresses of the people who are purchasing the Otter Hounds. If there was some way that, you know, there could be a form letter or something that goes out and says, you know, we are this club, we do X, Y, and Z, and, you know, we're having an otter talk on such and such and such and such. If you need any help with your new puppy, here's where you go and kind of hook the newbies in, you know, when they get their puppies. You know, puppies are a lot of work, and a lot of times people don't have a place to go to. And if they knew that all these people who've had puppies for a million years are here as a resource, you know, other than just going to the web website and saying, you know, I know I went and looked, you know, who's a reputable breeder? Well, I might not have maybe gone back, you know, for information on an Otter Hound, but I did go to Otter Hound University since the last um, you know, uh, video we had. So, you know, maybe you could get more members that way when they're purchasing their puppy, you know, even if you, you know, I don't know, as a buy-in offered them, you know, a reduced rate as a member, you know, whatever, you know, you might get a larger base that way. Well, most often breeders will um, give a membership for the first year to their new puppy buyers, and that we've off, we've often suggested that over the years. Um, but it what it boils down to is the breeder has to feel good about the club too. Right. Right. So. Yep. Yep. We've had some conversation about um, both of those topics, Marie. Both about having like a a puppy otter talk you know like i have this new puppy help right and maybe even making it just a chat not even like <laughs> otter talk with, with a panel but having it just be everybody joining in to just chat and talk and compare notes um right. we've talked about you know increasing memberships through breeders and having them encourage their puppy owners but exactly like marilyn said they have to be confident in the club and I think that that's something that we're currently just trying to really drive home that the club, the board of the club is here to help everybody. It's um, a happy, fun place where I think some people, um, their viewpoint of the board has been negative. We're trying very hard to improve that. 
reputation and uh, make it that happy place. So I appreciate both of those um, comments. Um, we've, we've heard it beyond just you and especially um, you might have even been part of that house party where we had a couple people that were just getting their new puppies or going to be getting their new puppies and they all said the same thing that they really, you know, wanted a place to gather information specifically to otter hounds. So, so yeah, that support system that support system. Right. Um, because when we first got our first otter hound puppy. We had Stuart when he was older, but puppy and Darby came to us and we didn't really, I mean, she has a different coat than Stuart does. So it's like, what do we do with this thing? I don't even know what to do with it. So it's just having that support system. So we hear you. And I okay. think that's truly, truly important. Like I said, just thought I'd throw it out there. Great idea. Oh, Great idea. Yeah. We appreciate that. We do. And I, I can sing that same song. 